Hi guys, today is another active test using the Altel MP808 TS and I'm going to be looking at the exhaust gas recirculation valve, EGR valve for short. The EGR valve is critical to the emissions system of the modern day car. I'm in a 7th generation Honda Accord and this would work in a lot of other Honda vehicles. I'm going to be testing the efficiency of the EGR valve at different RPMs of the engine using the scan tool. This is one tune-up item that people typically neglect and only service the EGR valve or replace it when it becomes faulty but this is an attempt to stay ahead of the game and ensure that your exhaust gas valve is functioning correctly. Now let's get this. There are two main types of EGR valves, the older one which is the vacuum controlled and the newer one which is electronic EGR valves controlled by the computer or the ECU of the car. The test today is based on electronic EGR valves. Before we go into the active test, I would like to just basically in a nutshell cover what the EGR valve does. The EGR valve is a vital connection between the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold and it simply delivers emitted amount of exhaust gas into the intake manifold and we'll cover why this is essential shortly because of the very high temperatures of the combustion chamber nitrogen becomes reactive and forms oxides of nitrogen and these are very bad for the atmosphere typically worsens emissions but delivering this metered volume of exhaust gas reduces the temperature of the combustion chamber such that it's not able to attain those very high temperatures which lead to the formation of oxides of nitrogen. A properly functioning EGR valve helps reduce fuel consumption, improves engine efficiency and, and all of that. When you have a bad or a failing EGR valve or an EGR valve that is partly restricted, you're going to have poor fuel economy, poor acceleration, a lot of drivability issues. So that said, let's get into the test. Go over to diagnostics under... I'll do a manual selection US let's do diagnostics control unit we select engine okay um, active test Select the EGR test activates the EGR valve first reads the input voltage from the EGR valve position sensor and detects a short or open so it's going to do this in stages next activates the EGR valve and monitors the response time in order to detect a stock or a slow response of the valve it is normal if response time is within three seconds on the open side and within two seconds on the closed side da, 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 da. we say okay it says please start the engine PHEAV EV da 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 should be put in maintenance mode yeah and then it talks about how to switch to maintenance mode I don't have any of those let me start the car please keep engine speed below 1500 rpm that's below I say okay so it's checking the sensor first Turn off electrical devices, center the steering wheel, do not move the steering wheel during testing. So I just remove this from the accessory socket. Then we center the steering wheel. Okay. Keep the engine speed between 220 RPM and 3200 RPM. So. Keep engine speed between 2,005 and 3,000. Hold the throttle steady. We're doing that. Okay, so EGR system failure or EGR valve failure. As you can see, I don't have a check engine light because the degree of restriction hasn't necessarily reached the threshold to trigger an EGR code. There are several EGR codes from P0400 to P0408 as well as some others. You would notice that both the duration for the opening and closing of the EGR valves were extended. The information we read earlier said that the opening duration should be about 
three seconds while the closing should be about two seconds in all cases we had opening and closing at about six seconds so that leads me to two things either there's some degree of carbon along the valve that is making it more difficult for it to open and close or that the motor itself is failing as you would know exhaust gas contains carbon because of the inefficiencies of combustion so as you're metering exhaust gases into the intake manifold you're going to transport some of that carbon into the intake manifold and that's one of the major reasons why the intake manifold has a lot of carbon in it so that carbon will get deposited on the valve itself and then make it difficult for it to function normally so that's going to be the subject of another video i'm going to take out the egr valve on this vehicle give it a good clean put it back and then repeat this test let's see if we're able to pass the test so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video if this has been helpful do give the video a thumbs up give it a like really helps and catch you on the next one cheers